Um, yeah, so in the case of our movie, like, uh, well, for, for our previous movie, um, we had a sales agent, um, and, you know, they represented the movie and got it sold and all mm. that cool stuff, um, and they were wonderful, but, you know, they've tried to, like, guide us and suggest things of, like, you know, what, what are the trends or what's hot or whatever, and so it's, like, ghost movies at the moment, and, like, you know, horrors it, but it was always a cycle. Like at the moment, ghost movies, possession movies, mm -hmm. um, whatever. Is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like, you can lean into the commercial and have a better result. And, you know, admittedly, that's something that we're going to look at doing in the future. But for this one, like, you know, we did something that we just wanted to do. And the cool thing about horror is that you can be experimental as well, mm -hmm. you know? Like, if you do a I mean, not always, but if you do a drama or a comedy, you, there's sort of only like you know, certain directions you can go. Mm. Whereas horror, like, kind of all bets are off. Mm. Um, and I think that's what's cool about it. You know, like you look at a movie like Your Evil Dead 2s or whatever, like, you know, it's crazy stuff going on. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and, and for directors as well, you can just like go wild. Yeah, so I mean, that's I mean, fun. Further to that, I would say that if you want to give people, you know, what's popular or what they want, you're just going to pe give people what they've had. You know, which mm -hmm. you know, people get bored with that sort of stuff. But you also make a good sale. Yeah, well, I think it's more important to just make something that you know appeals to you, and hopefully that that sort of mirrored in what you know people are showing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, often what happens, you know, filmmakers get the bigger budget, and then they have to kind of cede control or mm -hmm. you know final cut or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, you look at like Marvel movies and what they're sort of turned into. Yeah. So do you think? You Sorry, Marvel. You'd be happy to keep working uh, with micro budget uh, because it's going to give you final cut. It's going to give you that room for uh, <laughs> experimentation, don't and taking risks. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> Why can't we have both? Therein lies the rub. Uh, I'd love a career like that. Would be great. But, uh, <laughs> so now, uh, sense of humour. So you're, you're, you know, you've got to dig deep to find a sense of humour, and uh, I think sometimes in, in some of your films, mm -hmm. uh, where do you where do you think humour should sit in a horror film, or should it be in a horror film? Uh, talk to well, this guy. Me. <laughs> talk to this filthy guy. Why, why me? <laughs> I um I think humour definitely has its place in 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 horror um, and in all genre of film really, but you've just got to know where to cut it off. Um, there was actually a lot of humour that we removed from this one here. Um, not that it didn't necessarily work, it just didn't fit with what the movie became after we wrote it. Um, if you look at our other film, Slaughterhouse as well, there's a lot of comedic elements in there that were in the same kind of vein with what we were doing with this one. Um, but we just felt that it didn't quite match the tone of what we were going for in the end of the film compared to when we first started to write it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tom, yeah, what, what's your take on Oh, look, I think, I mean, humour in a horror movie should be used as an instrument to just sort of relieve tension just so you can lay it back on without it sort of um, overwhelming the audience. So you want to give them a moment of relief just so, you know, the next bit really sort of hits hard. And, yeah. um, so I think, yeah, it's absolutely got a place. Um, but in a movie like this, which is, I don't, I don't know, I think it's just, it, it, it sort of lives and dies by its sheer relentlessness. Yeah. I, it's I, a gauntlet. It, it, exactly. Yeah, I, I it's think running to do, a gauntlet. Yeah. To do that um, would be a little bit dishonest. Like, this is just a really harsh world that I don't I, think you want to let up the accelerator at yeah. any point. Yeah, um, a woman here, a friend of mine who was here, she actually wanted to catch the next film, so she hasn't stayed around for the Q&A. But as she left, she said, uh, that was fucking brilliant. It was Shakespearean. It's a tragedy. So, in a tragedy, you know, which, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Well, you know, there's, like that. Yeah. there's uh, <laughs> definitely, in its, in its uh, pared back kind of uh, desolation, there is definitely something, you know, epic in its... Mm. Tragedy, you know, right at the end. It's like you're working. It's like big death, but he's like, look, he's going to survive. He's like, and then yeah. we get, then we get that scene, then we get that drone shot. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to throw it out to, out to the audience uh, if we uh, have some questions here. I can see someone in the back there. Uh, yeah, Robbie. Well, congratulations on the film. 
Um, yeah. Just because, did you guys say you filmed in the second year of COVID? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So, being a micro, ultra low budget film, mm. um, and given that um, I know people have worked in productions throughout COVID that have spent you know, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, and up to the Marvel th films with millions of dollars and COVID stuff like rat testing, COVID masks and stuff, did you factor that into your budget in the micro budget or did you have a, a consideration of thinking, listen, maybe we'll wait till COVID's over and film it? And did you also think that COVID with just the situation, did that add to the film and the way you shot the film and planned it and then kind of did post-production? Oh my God, he's Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as the COVID stuff, like we're, we're pretty lucky. Like um, most of us were from Tassie, so um, Benny now lives in Melbourne. Dave was from interstate as well, so like um, they were kind of the only things that we ran into where like we got Dave stuff out of the way all in one go. You, we had to. Well, you went into Melbourne lockdowns a couple of times. Yeah, there was so. an occasion where. Um, we were filming, I had to come back to Melbourne and we're going to keep filming something else two weeks later. When I flew back to Melbourne, I landed into, I think it was our second or third lockdown. Mm -hmm. And then I was stuck there for a few months and we had to weigh up, is this going to keep going? And I come back down. Uh, but in terms of the production in Tassie itself, uh, because around the, the time there just wasn't uh, a large like, yeah, outbreak fine. in Tasmania, yeah. we just had to be concerned of if you do have a cough, go get tested and just make sure of it. We didn't have um, no, huge like concerns. No, it, it, just, it just wasn't really that much. No. In there were a couple of shoots that we had to postpone because yeah. maybe someone got COVID. But I think in a large yeah. part, this film was sort of... Out, outside, so yeah. you have to wear masks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the, the, the project was kind of necessitated by COVID in a way. Yeah. Like Pre-COVID, yeah. pre we had planned to shoot a different project, which was sort of we were prepping for and, and yeah. sort of was shut down because of COVID and the scale was too big. So we're like, okay, well, what can we shoot, you know, within these confines? And, mm -hmm. and, and we came up with, with this as a solution. So. Yeah. Awesome. Did you get any input or support for um, Screen Tasmania on the group? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. We have we're not bitter about it at all. Any <laughs> support from Screen Tasmania <laughs> ever. Did you yeah. No, not, no, zilch, nothing. No. No. I don't think they even want to. There was moral support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't they call horror psychological thrillers or something? <laughs> <laughs> They're not interested. No, yeah, yeah, they're they're right, interested. Yeah, let's not get too down. They're looking locking key right now. They're too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got a question? Bank on Bank on Bank on money makers Look. right now. Um, so... This is a question for, um, so I'm a, I'm a filmmaker from the Northern Territory, and I think it's really cool that you guys are doing this stuff in Tassie. Um, I don't know what it's like, but I've kind of always imagined it's a little bit similar. Um, you're saying that you've kind of moved to Melbourne. Is there, like, do you guys, what's the film scene like in Tassie, and um, do you, Sam, have any, like, is there, like, a pressure or something to, you know, move to go to a bigger city, or, like, you know? Yeah, so you, you've got the movie um, playing Sunday night, is it, Luke? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, like... Yeah, like, as a regional filmmaker, it's tough, like, you'd know. Um, and I've been living in Tassie. Like, I've, I've moved a couple of times, but... Um, yeah, it, it's just... It's tough. It's tough. If you were in Melbourne and Sydney, like, the biggest thing you've got access to is... Uh, crew and actors and stuff like that, but you also have the hometown advantage, so like so much of what we're able to do is through like family connections and friends and stuff like that, and also I imagine if you're making a movie in Melbourne or Sydney, like, you know, you're going to have to pay your big fees and everyone sort of is, is pretty savvy to, to film production and stuff, whereas ours, like we even cold called some farmers and we're like, hey, can we shoot on your property? And they were cool with it. So yeah, Luke, we all work for free. <laughs> Actually, did all you free. all for free? <laughs> How easy was it? I mean, because you made like what, four or five shorts before. before yeah, Blood Hunt. yeah. Were they quite easy to to make? Yeah, I mean, like also like 
with this, this is kind of like our greatest hits. Like we went back to like so many places <laughs> oh, yeah. we'd shot yeah, before. Yeah. Like, uh, like no one's seen our movies. Like no one's gonna notice if we're, <laughs> if we're back again. <laughs> um, yeah. So as a regional filmmaker, like it's tough, but it's also got some advantages. But like what I've found difficult is 